Good morning, everyone. So today we are uh, going to discuss about the subject called uh, consistency. In that, the topic we are going to discuss is the root locus. So the root locus, uh, where we have this technique. So uh, till now we have seen about all the uh, like, uh, like uh, mechanical transition systems and rotation systems. And in that mechanical transition and rotation system, we have how to find out the transition function that we have seen. So and we have also studied about the block diagram and set of block diagram rules and based on these rules we have seen about how to find out the transfer function of the current system. Now with the help of this root locus technique we are going to analyze the performance of the system. To find out the stability of the system and to know the performance of the system this is one of the technique we are going to use and this technique is nothing but a root locus technique. So in this technique In 1948, uh, 1948 was invented or discovered this root locus technique. So this root locus technique is mostly applicable to open loop control systems. And if you are taking this open loop transfer function, as you already know, this G of S in the H of S is equal to K by S into S plus E1 into S plus E2, where E1 and E2 are the number of codes. And in the, in the numerator side, you will have zeros. So here, uh, so if you are taking this as an open loop transfer function, to this open loop transfer function, with the help of this open loop uh, transfer function, we have to apply this root locus technique and find out, depending upon that, we will find out the stability of the system. So for this one, in the denominator side, what we if you are seeing, do you have the equation as S into S plus 1, sorry, S into S plus P1 into S plus P2. So this is what we call as a characteristic equation. So this we call as a, a characteristic equation or from this characteristic equation you will find out the number of codes. So here by simplifying this expression you will find out the number of codes. Here before going for this one you have to know I mean you have to calculate the magnitude as well as the angle for this transfer function. So how to calculate this magnitude? The angle we have calculated is mod of g of s into h of s. So to calculate the magnitude, this was the formula. That is mod of g of s into h of s. And to calculate the angle, this is angle of g of s into h of s. That is nothing but a 2 q plus 1 into 180 degrees. Uh, so this is what the uh, angle that I have to calculate in the root locus technique. So in this technique, first for every uh, transfer function, so there we give uh, transfer function and to that transfer function, you need to find out the root locus. So what is in my root locus? Locus is nothing but joining all the points into one. So this is nothing but a, a locus. Means whatever the points present in your S plane, in your S plane, so joining all the points is nothing but a locus. So before going to this one, this is suppose I am considering an S plane. So how to form, how to form a locus? So suppose uh, in this S plane, this is your real axis, this is your J omega axis plus. And here plus, this is plus j omega, this is minus j omega, and this is plus sigma and minus sigma. This is of, uh, all four uh, coordinates of your S plane. To this S plane, you need to plot the number of zeros and number of poles according to your transfer function. So, so suppose I am having the number of poles that is present over in this location and in this location. I am having the two poles that is present. Uh, in this location, the poles are using the symbolic representation as cross mark. This represents the poles, and zeros are represented with a small circle. Okay, so for representation of poles, I use the cross symbol, and for the representation of zeros, I use a small circle. So to this one, suppose in my S plane, if I am having the two poles, that is present in the left half side. So this is the right half of the S plane and this is your left half of the S plane. So if it is located, if it is uh, located in the left half of the S plane, the 
then the system is a stable system. Okay. So when the number, when how many number of poles or zeros are there? If the poles and zeros are located in the left half of the S plane, then that particular system is a stable system. Suppose if it is located in, if it is located in right half of the S plane, if your poles has been located in the right half of the S plane, then that particular system is a unstable system. Or if your poles has been located on the imaginary axis, that is nothing but a j omega axis. If my one pole is located in this side and another pole is located in this direction, then the system is a marginally stable system. So these are the three conditions you need to remember. Okay. So before going to this one, you have some set of um, steps to be remembered. How to plot the root locus? Okay. So first of all, before doing that question, you need to find out the how the root locus has been plotted. Suppose if my poles are located, one pole is located in this in this direction. So these are the three poles which are being located. So what is the locus joining all the points? So these are the points. These are the uh, points which uh, with the help of these points have to draw the locus. So how to draw this locus? So from starting, this is the first pole which I am having. So I have to check whether uh, the condition is, uh, the root locus has to start, whether you are having any poles. See, if you are going for this side, if you are considering root, root, root locus to be starting from this pole, you have to check to the left, uh, to this right side, if any number of I mean, poles are there or not. If it is, it uh, means nothing but here, in towards from starting from this pole, this pole, you have to check with your right side any number of po uh, poles and zeros. The number of poles and zeros should be an odd number. So the number of poles and zeros count will be.
the number of moles are there how many number of moles are there two means it is an even number then from this point to this point the root locus should not be drawn okay so here the path will not be formed the root locus path will not be formed from this point to the this point because if you consider any point from here from second pole to uh, from the second pole to before reaching to the third pole if you consider any point then total number of poles and zeros are only two that is an even number so there is no uh, no need of I mean, drawing the path and there is no root locus path has not been existed then after this one after this third I mean, after this the third pole then you have to check uh, from this point onwards if you consider any point then you calculate how many number of poles and zeros are there after the third pole so how many poles are there one two three so three poles are there so that is nothing but your odd number you are getting the number of poles and zeros so the root locus path has been existence so this is my root locus path so which i am drawing in the shaded part this is a root locus path and here i am having another root locus path so this is how you need to draw the root locus first what you have to do is first whatever the given function you are taking you have to find out how many number of zeros are there how many number of poles are there in your transfer function that you have to calculate then you mark all the poles and zeros in the s plane then after marking all the poles and zeros in your s plane then you have to draw the root locus path how to draw the root locus path you start from this point from right side onwards and check in each and every point uh, whether uh, number of poles and zeros are there the number of uh, poles and zeros are there any odd number i mean counting them I mean, total number of poles and zeros you are getting odd number or not if you are getting odd number then the root locus path is is existence and you have to draw the root locus then if it is even number then in that particular region there is no root locus so to uh, so here here i am having the root locus and here in this point i am having the root locus here i am not having any root locus so this is how we need to uh, draw the root locus path okay this is what you need to remember then you have to after remembering this you have few steps to be remember for this root locus the first step is nothing but the step one you have in the steps to be written i mean steps to be remember before uh, drawing the root locus so the first one is the root locus is symmetrical to real axis or bond so the first step is so you have to check for a very given transfer function you need to check the root locus is symmetrical to
root locus. So this things you need to add it. The next point will be next we will consider with an example. I will go for the next session. Thank you.